Hey there, it's Tim once again from the Word of Life Church. Our address is 3342 Midway Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. That is the Word of Life Church. Our pastor is Junior Mount, and we'd like to give you an open invitation to come out and be with us and worship with us. Uh, let me give you our service times. We have uh, Sunday school at uh, 10 a.m., uh, worship service at 11 and then we come back at 6 p.m. in the afternoon for our evening service. And we also have a midweek service Wednesday night at 7 p.m. So mark all this on your calendar. And if you can, come out and be with us. Uh, if you're looking for a church, come out, check us out. Uh, if you're a brother and sister in Christ and you have church on uh, different days, uh, come out and be with us and worship with us. We'd love to have you. Uh, if you have it going if you're a member of a church and you're uh, you have the same service times as we do as I always say and I try not to be sound mean or or uh, you know I'm trying to hurt anybody's feelings when I say it this way but you know if you if you're a member of a church and have time uh, the same times of worship that we do or in the place you know stay there you know, uh, support your preacher and your congregation. And, you know, the Lord can bless you just like he blesses every other church. And I hope he is blessing each and every one of these churches. Uh, you know, just, just you know, that the spirit is just moving. And uh, I'll ask for our church, just, the Holy Ghost is moving, the anointing is falling, people getting saved, people getting healed. And it's just, you know, a wonderful time to be uh, in the Lord, be a Christian. Uh, also a dangerous time as well but you know what we've not yet resisted under blood uh, yet now you know back in the early days when the Christian church first started out basically they it, it was spread uh, really if you if you want to put it this way by the blood of uh, the martyrs people getting uh, slain for the cause of Christ and you know we really we have to be of the same mind as the um, you know prophets and disciples and apostles of, uh, of old we have to be willing to hazard our life for the cause of Christ and um, you know that's and that's to get people say that's the main goal is to gather as many as you can to get in to, to you know help them to get into God's kingdom if you're saved and out there evangelist or preacher teacher just you witness to people whatever that's what we need to do we need you know just to, to throw, throw ourselves out there because you know the Lord will go before us and it, even if we have to face death he's not going to abandon us you know if we if we die for the cause of Christ then praise the Lord we're going to see him and we'll be with him for eternity. And you know, I'm I'm still younger, but you know what? If the Lord wants to call me home at any minute now, praise the Lord. I, I'm 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 ready to go. I'm saved, and it's just wonderful to be saved, knowing that you don't have to worry about death. You know, imagine people that have no hope that we're trying trying to reach that. Maybe has no beliefs whatsoever. Possibly believes in the theory, the the false theory of evolution, and believe we're just a bunch of animals, and we're just the highest animal that's on the planet. And uh, you know, when we uh, close our eyes in death, that's it. There's nothing else. And well, some people actually take advantage of that too, and live a very ungodly lifestyle because well you know well, they're all worried about it you know do what i want to and go out and you know heard even people say it that you know the only god in their life is in themselves well you know there again that's what i said it's, that's the kind of people that we're trying to reach and uh show that there is a god he has a son that he sent to die for me, for you, for those people that we're talking about. And if so happens that you stumbled across this message, just hang in for a little while. Listen to it. 
the Lord said he didn't come in to condemn or he come in to fulfill the law and save people from their sins by his sacrifice on the cross now let's have that let's use that as an example on the hip, go off go off this hill Lord hanging between the heavens and the earth on a cross two criminals on each side of him one chose the right way one chose the wrong way the wrong one said hey if you're the son of God why don't you take, get yourself off off of that cross and get us down and show us how, what your power is show us your power it's the same way people mock Jesus before the crucifixion they mock him the same way now the other one the other criminal said you know don't you know don't you have any re basically I'm paraphrasing but don't you have any respect and don't you realize this guy this this man hanging here uh, was hanged for the wrong reasons he didn't do anything and that what they were getting they deserved what the Lord Jesus was getting he didn't deserve and looked at him and said remember me when you enter your kingdom <laughs> and then he says the Lord looks over and says this day oh, I love this this day thou shalt be with me in paradise <laughs> praise the Lord I'd love to imagine hearing the words spoken directly from the Lord Jesus to you saying that this day you'll be with me in paradise people if you haven't become here if you're not serving the Lord let me tell you something it, it is the best way and you're going to have life everlasting these other religions cannot promise you anything like that number one as my calling goes in spiritual warfare and as watchman, I, I can tell you right now that the dark side, the enemy, Satan, his demonic spirits and his fallen angels, all his forces that he uses to try to destroy us, they can't promise you. He can't promise you anything. He's pro if he's promised you anything, whatever it is, it's a lie. If he's promised that you're going to uh, when the when the Lord comes back, He is going to, uh, and, and under the guise of the Antichrist, and as I said, the Antichrist is not against Christ. It can mean that, but really, is in place of Christ. And you know, Revelation nineteen nineteen, He's going to be out there on the field with all the armies, and that's this arm. This army is probably going to be probably the most supernaturally and technologically charged army that has ever been with weapon, unimaginable type weapons that are going to be pointed in the sky to try to stop the visible descent and the return of the Lord Jesus to this planet to this reality I will say take that back talking about coming to this planet I don't think you need to look at it in this way dimensionally this reality is going to split open if you can grasp this here and the Lord's going to come through with his heavenly armies got to think about it dimensional terms because a lot of people out there want to say and you know uh, well you know yeah, there could have been in Jesus but you know he was some kind of uh, he was just he was at the, the very basic thing would say he was just a good man a good prophet a good teacher you know well that's what the Muslims teach and I believe he was I believe he was the son of, of the living God you know their prophet and their God Muhammad and Allah cannot Muhammad and Allah can't offer you what the Lord Jesus and Jehovah God can offer you all they offer you is a life of bloodshed. people that's in that the devil has really lied to you you know 70 virgins when you get to heaven and uh, you can uh, do all sorts of things uh, interesting read to find out about some of the stuff that they believe and I'm not just talking about that I'm talking about other religions as well if you study them 
And brother, what are you studying these other religions for? Because you gotta know what you're up against and you gotta know how to give an answer. When I, someone asks us about why we have such a hope that we have, we have to give an answer. Someone in a certain religion, that way you can point out this and this and this and see it's not this way when you are saved and become a Christian. And I don't want to use Christian, Christian in a generic term. And the word Christian these days has become just a generic term for certain, several different things. What I'm talking about, a Christian is one that is Christ-like, that walked as Christ did when he was down here, and does the work that the Lord did while he walked this planet. He said, hey, even greater works that we would do. And look what he did. He, if, you know, heal people, cast out demonic spirits, raise people from the dead. Uh, you say, really? Is that possible? You know, with God, all things are possible. And he does have gifts. We get saved, we get sanctified, we go through the sanctification process, and they get to the Holy Ghost is bestowed upon us, and we have those gifts. And if anything, these days, like I mentioned this, maybe it was the last video, uh, really and truly these days we ha really have to, ha we have need of all of them, but really the spirit of discernment is one thing that we really need. You say, well, why do you concentrate on that one, brother? Because we have people that are spying out our liberty in these churches and other of uh, other religions uh, and just seeing what's going on now you know uh, there have been cases of people coming in you know church shootings and uh, you know uh, there, there was a day that you didn't hear none of the stuff that you're hearing these days and it's not been that many years ago that people still respected God's house and didn't come by and spray paint graffiti and all kinds of uh, satanic symbols or anything of that sort or break windows in a church or something like that or break in and steal it. People have lost their fear of the true and living God. You know, using fear in kind of actually two ways. Fear of a God who can actually take you out of this world if he chooses to and also fear a loving fear as you would a father because he is our heavenly father we have earthly fathers that we give respect to and that we love it's the same type of relationship with our father in heaven you know and he sent his son and that right there should be a template about how we should live our lives in our Christian walk honor our father and our mother that's in the Bible. That's what we're supposed to do. We're to honor God our Father as well. And it says we're not to call anyone Father besides the Lord. And that's a whole other issue right there when we're talking about uh, calling people Father and, you know, I think people can probably understand where I'm heading with that, but I'm not going to go that direction right now. Um, if you will, if you have, uh, if you have your Bible, Turn with me to uh, the book of First Timothy, and we'll be going to chapter six. Uh, Paul was writing these letters to Timothy, and he said that he was his son in the faith, uh, and. Uh, First Timothy chapter six, uh, he said he was his son in the faith, and let no man d despise his youth. However old that he was, I'm sure there's probably some someone out there that can answer that question with research and find out about how old that Timothy was when he was starting his religion, but uh, uh, starting his religion, starting to walk in God's will and preaching and taking care of the house of God. Uh, but also says too that we're not to be a bishop and be a pastor of a church if we're a novice in the faith. They say because you'd be lifted up in pride and 
you know, that just won't work out well. You want someone who is a seasoned veteran that's walked for many, many years in God's Word and has seen a lot of stuff and can take care of a lot of stuff. So I'll talk about there's something I'm going to preach about that I have the understanding because I went through it or I know something about it and, you know, I'm not going to lie to you about anything. Uh, and there's some things that I, I, I cannot preach on because I, I can give you God's word about it. But as far as saying, okay, I've done this or this has happened to me or something like that, there's some things I can uh, say that, or I can't say anything about it because I've not experienced it. Uh, that's, I mean, that's that's the way I feel. Now, there's some who just, you know, want to preach and, you know, have be everything and, you know, want to pack in 30 or 40 years of living in their you know young life you know say for instance you have someone you know a, a teenager or something like that that's you know saying well you know I believe I'm supposed to be a minister I'm supposed to be a pastor or, or you know and they not have the years of experience of being out there and as God's word said being you know they're still a novice you know you just don't jump in and all of a sudden take off run and you know jump into the pastorship of a uh, church or something like that uh, you know start it's the little things that God wants you to do until you until you continue to grow in the faith go through that sanctification process it may it may be holding holding the door open to the back of the church for people to come in uh, eventually it may be uh, something like a teaching Sunday school class or something like that uh, be uh, a young man who's just come out of his teen years or has uh, you know two or three years a little bit older uh, that could teach a, a, a teenage class the uh, same thing about a uh, uh, a young lady she could teach a class of teenagers because they went through those years and they've got out of those years and you know they can kind of uh, really relate to what they're going through the uh, people that they're teaching because they probably went through the same thing in the matter of years uh, that they were uh, you know young in school and uh, with peer pressure and everything like that uh, and let me tell you the, <laughs> with the schools I, I, I can't imagine anymore uh, how it was since I, I've been out of school for many years now uh, and I can remember uh, that uh, you know things weren't as out in your face as they are now. Uh, Say this back back in the day when I was in church, excuse me, church. Back when I was in high school, middle school, high school. I'll say this. Uh, people say, "Well, he's he's being a, he's bashing he's bashing the gays." No. If you if you were if people thought you were a sodomite, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you this wrong right now, I'm I'm to, if I if I can possibly this, I'm never going to try to use the word homosexual because that's just a made up word. You know I'm I'm gonna use what the Bible calls these people to do this men with men, women with them, so, sodomy. At any rate, back in the day when I was talking about being in school. If people thought that you were a sodomite, thought you were, you know, we use the word, gay, that that word's been changed around. You know, most of the time that person would get beat pretty severely. But nowadays, it's hit to be like that. You know why? Because the world's turning that way. Hollywood. Let me tell you something. I can't stand Hollywood because that, that, let me tell you, the devil's behind that. 100 percent and look how much and uh, you know the stuff that he pushes out through tv and the movies and everything um there's what that what is that station abc family and their slogan is a new kind of family and buddy it sure is so seeing some of the stuff that, uh that's been on there i don't watch any of it but just in passing and seeing uh, you know what's written up about it and some of the shows that's on there Lord help us <laughs> you know I remember at one point that we had three channels that we could watch 
four if you if you had the right antenna pointed in the right direction. And there was nothing of that sort on TV. We, we the 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 moral compass got got knocked down and broke, and we went spir spiraling out of control. And look where we're at right now. We look to Hollywood and we look to these people uh, for what's popular and. We try to be that way, you know, with social media, we get on people, try to follow other people that's just doing just stupid stuff. And uh, there, was, <laughs> there was a, what was called, was called uh, something of the, something of this nature, the, the Holy Ghost Challenge or the Blasphemy Against the Holy Ghost Challenge uh, set up by, I don't know exactly who it was, but there was a lot of people that did it, even a few, uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but a few uh, popular people that that, you, that would be in Hollywood or something like that, that got on there and actually did it. And basically they, they said that they blasphemed the Holy Ghost uh, and, you know, hated God and all that and, and, put, and put it on YouTube. And they got a following. I don't know if it's still on there or not. You can do a search on it and find out and see. I don't because it just makes me, makes me sick at my stomach thinking about it. People doing that. Now God being God, you know, He knows people mean something, or if someone ha doesn't have the true understanding of what they're doing, you know, they're in the hands of a just God. And I'll say that, but I want to be found doing God's will, and in no way do I want to blaspheme the Holy Ghost because that is one sin that right there that's as i said that's it you know you're you're done for there's there's no salvation you know, there's no remedy you know basically your your destiny is going to be hell and then the lake of fire eventually if you take the mark of the beast if we're alive if you're alive i'm alive when that comes into to being and i'm not so sure that all it's going to be is just some kind of a chip or something that they put inside of you, even though I believe technology will have a part in it just because we're a technological society. Uh, now that could go a different way too, and I don't know if I get into that tonight. Uh, but I, I believe that once you, there's going to be some things that's it's really hard to get in and define uh, what I'm trying to talk about, but as anyway. What I'm talking about, I don't believe it's just going to be the mark of the beast. It's just going to be some kind of implanted chip, uh, like everybody thinks it is. But you know, like I said it may be to a certain extent. But I also, I also believe, and some other researchers believe that it's going to be actually more than that. There's going to be a reason that that. Uh, when you take the mark, there's going to be something else other than just taking some kind of a chip and putting it in your forehead or hand or something like that, even though that may be part of it. There's going to be some kind of change to you that you're no longer going to be redeemable. Now let's grasp, think about think about this for a minute. Something else just beside, well, in your mind, you've already at that point decided that you're going to follow the Antichrist and you're giving up on the one and true and only Savior that there is the Lord Jesus and you're going to follow this Antichrist because he's going to have answers to everything uh, I'll just go and say it. there's another possibility and you know it's a, a very real possibility of types of warfare that goes on uh, by you know nuclear biological uh, you know without the restrainer here, what and you know what would happen? The restrainer is right now still in place. Otherwise, this planet would be in chaos right now. And one, and one of these days, he'll be taken out of the way, and boom, there it is. He was going to run out of control. The Christians are going to die. The, you know, you know the, this this man or partly man. That's that's a whole other study right there. I'm sure that we're talking about the Antichrist. We're talking about just 
a person that has the spirit of the Antichrist in him, but also he is not going to be fully human at that point. Uh, he's going to walk in to the temple and claim that he is he is the God of gods. There is no other gods, no other real religion, uh, and you know I could I could go on trying not to get into all that because that's such a deep deep <laughs> hole to go down and talk about and you know grasp things out. May get into something like that as we do the spiritual warfare talking about that uh, hopefully I'm, I'm be doing starting on that series uh, before long uh, it's uh, very wild stuff and people don't realize a lot of what's out there they're just happy to stay within the four walls of their church building and that's all they want with it and then during the week that's all they want. don't want to deal with it don't want to think about it uh, but it's uh you say that we're, we're witnessing even now we're witnessing life-changing and uh, amazing uh, exotic events that are happening uh, you know the signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is so near I believe at this point as I said, you know, we always talk about five to midnight, and I always say, hey, I believe we're about one minute till or half a minute till midnight before all this stuff is going to break out. Uh, talking about earlier about the doctrine of imminency, you know, Paul thought in his day that the Lord would come, well, and we do the same. But you know, there was prophecies that come to pass that we see in God's word, especially you know, from the Old Testament and the New Testament, all the way through the Revelation, the Book of Revelation. Uh, some stuff that has happened that we can mark but okay you know look at Israel they become a nation I believe it's 47 48 1947 1948 become a nation uh, Israel I believe is one of God's uh, uh, time clocks uh, and uh, that started and kicked off a, a lot of stuff uh, so much to get into we should have plenty of time to do this and everything because there's just so much. Uh, it's, it's, you know, uh, too much to pack in in this little bit of time. But we'll get there. We'll get there. We keep doing these videos and, and uh, if everybody wants to chime in, you know, it, you know, send an email or, you know, uh, uh, you know, something we want to talk about or uh, then, you know, we'll, we'll look at it and We'll do it. You know, it's supposed to be a teaching, a preaching series, you know, that the Lord felt, you know, that I should do. The Lord kind of put it on my heart to do it. So that's what I'm doing. I want to obey the Lord. You should be the same way. If you're saved, if you're a Christian, you want to obey the Lord and do what he would have you do to the smallest, to the smallest thing, to the largest thing, whatever he would have you to do is what you need to, you need to want to and you need to do it. Uh, because if you be found faithful in the smaller things, you know, he can make you uh, into the greater things, put you in charge and do greater things, whatever that may be. Anyway, uh, a lot of that were come from God's will, you know, uh, just following him. Uh, there's some stuff that, you know, that was kind of on my heart and I uh, believe said exactly what, you know, he would have me to say. And there again, doing God's will, that's what we want to do. Okay, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, and let's just start verse 1, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own master worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine, which is according to godliness, Verse 4, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions 
and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil, surmising. And let's see. Before I read verse 5, I'm going to back up just a little bit and add this to what we're talking about. And this is in the, uh, 1 Timothy 5 and verse, verse 20. And it reads, and this is gonna, you know, it was a whoa, but yeah, it's it's God's word. First uh, Timothy five and verse twenty. Listen to this: them that sin, rebuke before all, that others also may fear. That is God's word. How far have we gotten away from that? We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or put you know inbound the spot. God's word said it. I know we're trying to be a more user-friendly type of church, but you know, if, you know, and I know certain things has to go through channels, and sometimes it is better that way. I, well, you know, uh, to go through you know your deacons, your pastor, and of that nature and stuff like that. Uh, that way, you know, it won't be causing any strife because something like that might happen. It may cause some strife, but hey, let me tell you something. Even that's watered down right there because that's God's word. Let then that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. Now let me tell you something. I was a member of a church once upon a time, and I heard, I heard that happen. Someone was preaching and some people was against that preacher and they got called out. Call on the carpet as the old saying goes. And after that we're no longer welcome at that church. It's God's word. You know, that's part of your sword being sharp. Sharper than any two-edged sword. You know, it's going to catch you coming in and going out. But in the case, if you've sinned and you need the forgiveness and that sword has pierced you or something like that, right into the heart, then you know something? Burn your knees up, slide into the altar and get that, uh, whatever it is, under the blood and get forgiveness for it. Don't let anything linger. Because you may not get a chance to repent. People have left churches, ended up in car accidents and died, have had heart attacks after leaving the church. Just many different things. Don't let anything, God's word, don't let the sun go down in your wrath. Don't let anything go that's going to separate you from God. And right now I can see this trying to slide into the debate about conditional grace as opposed, you know, the whole once saved, always saved issue. I'm not going to get into that night there again. That may be something else we may talk about at one point. And I think that would actually be a good study. Uh, people would finally, you know, not that I, I'm, I'm the keeper of the truth and everything like that. Hey, I'm just going, I'm using God's word. I'm using the same, hopefully, the same word that you are. Some of these newer Bibles have taken out scriptures and are, uh, I'm sorry, you, you don't want them. You don't want to do, have anything to do with them. It's they've taken and changed God's word and uh, scrambled it up, taken verses out and uh, I, I know people and people slam the, the King James version of the Bible well, let me tell you something that's the one I was raised with the one that I through it heard God's word and believed it and was saved because of the Lord Jesus died on the cross and he offered his salvation to me to repent at a young age if I had to repent and turn back to him since then, absolutely. And I've said before, you know, while we're still in this, we're, we're not going to be perfect. It's the spirit in us because of the Lord is perfect. 
but that right there is not a license to sin when I say that. After we're saved, we are to strive to walk in God's will and to have good works and bear good fruit after we have come to the knowledge of the truth in Christ Jesus, after we have saved, been saved. Continue reading here. Uh, I went back, and I'm going to go back to, let's see, uh, chapter 6 of 1 Timothy, uh, verse 5. Uh, Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing, listen here, supposing that gain is godliness. Does that, does that sound familiar? Destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. When I say that, does that spark something in your thought process right there? That people teach that gain is godliness and, you know, get what you want. Pray for that, you know, huge four-wheel drive, $50,000 truck, you know, be a seed offering, something sends you this prayer cloth and you just believe it and you know just think you're going to receive it and you know one of the days you're going to pull it in the driveway and there's going to be a, a truck sitting there. Talking to my father one day and he made a statement that stuck with me. He said he didn't believe in what he called a gimme God. It means every time we kneel down we're just asking Oh Lord, give me this and give me this, and I'd be happy with this, and I want this and everything like that. You know what you should want? You should want God to use you to gain more for His kingdom to get more people saved, because that's what He saved you to do is to work for Him, saved you from the devil's hell just for that very reason. Because there is a hell; it was made for the devil and his angels, but. It's enlarging its borders, it's talked about, in size for all the people that's going to go off and in that are walking in the wide path and they're not on the straight and narrow in their walk with Christ. And that's the walk that we should be on because it's a narrow way. But it's a true way. It's the way that I want to get in here the rest of my life. I hope you do as well if that's what you're doing. If you're not, then get in God's will. No, we say, get saved, get saved, get saved. That's the message. The Lord Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost. And I do that. That's the first priority, to talk to people about that. Secondary is, is to destroy the devil and his works where we find it. I guarantee right now, people have viewed this, uh, what we would call, you know, whatever you call it, infiltrators or... Uh, you know, people that uh, that are uh, Luciferian or satanic worshipers or whatever they want to call themselves, uh, Wiccans or something like that, you know, praying against the message of the Lord Jesus. And I gave an example the other night of satanic mass being held in a church, but the Lord sniffed them out and found them out and got them out of there. And I believe that was in my previous video if you want to listen to it and get the story on that. I've told it before, but uh, actually it was at the church during teaching when I told that. Um, but, you know, the, the, the enemy's always fighting. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, I heard the, the saying, and we say it so much, but it's so true. And when you say it, it empowers you. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Who's in the world? It's the prince of this world. The prince of the power of the air. Look. He was defeated at the cross. But the deal is, the issue is, is that that hasn't been totally settled yet. Right now, we're still having to deal with 
the devil, his demonic spirits, the fallen angels that were cast down with him. Yeah, I know it speaks that they're the angels, fallen angels are kept in, you know, the lowest part of hell. And I'm going to go ahead and mention that while we're talking about that, along with the line here. It talks about in the, in the, in the book of Jude. Bear with me for just one moment here, because I want to get this. I feel like I'm, but uh, want to bring. I want to bring that out. In the book of Jude. If I can get there here. All right. Book of Jude. Uh, only one chapter. We'll start at five. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. Talking about the Israelites when they come out and, you know, Moses said, hey, I'm drawing the line of the sand. Who's on the Lord's side? And eventually, you know what, that generation passed away, died before, before anything, of, anything of God's promises come to pass other than get, getting them out of Egypt. Okay, verse 6, and this is what I was talking about. Even the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Okay, now, go with me if you will. Going to the book of <laughs> No, it's good. Sorry for the delay here, but my fingers just aren't working right here. Okay, in the book of Second Peter, and chapter 2, and remember the previous verse I read in you, because this is exactly what we're talking about here with this. Uh, in uh, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down, to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now that word hell right there is actually the word Tartarus, okay? And it's only used that one that one part. And uh, this is a little bit of a side note, that word Tartarus was a Greek word and that was the place where the giants and titans were if, if, in Greek mythology were uh, chained up in the lowest lowest part of hell and damnation that was it right there okay remember that because that is something that we are definitely going to get into eventually and in talking about spiritual warfare and these things that we're having to fight against and deal with these days just felt like the Lord wanted me to go to that direction and start that out and I'm glad he did because that's one thing I've been wanting to bring out and I'm going to expound on eventually. But going back to the book of 1 Timothy, talking about gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Six, and this is what we want to live by. And this rubs people the wrong way because people like their money. Hey, I, I like having the extra money because, you know, it answers, you know, it takes care of you know you, you gotta have a lot this light right here you know you gotta have money to pay the electricity and get you get food and you know pay vehicle and house payment and everything like everything like that but don't let it have you six but godliness with contentment is great gain 
And Brother Paul at one point said he had learned to be content in any situation that he was in. And my goodness, look at all the situations that Brother Paul was in and experienced. A lot more than I've ever been through and probably will ever be through. Who knows, my head might go on the, the chopping block or a guillotine or something like that, and I may lose my head for the, the cause of Christ, and you know, so be it. You know, I'm gonna get a I'm gonna be with the Lord and then on the resurrection I'm gonna have a glorified body like into the Son of Man and I just <laughs> You know, praise the Lord, you know, and thank Him for His salvation, that way we can live forever. There's nothing like it. Verse 7, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. People, you know what? You can you can have a bag of money or your be buried in your your hot rod car. And I've heard some wild stories about how people have been buried and the things that they put in. Well, look at it in, in Egypt and the tombs and stuff like that. Uh, and the pyramids and other places, uh, pyramids around the world. Uh, a lot more than people realize. Uh, stuff that's brought in with the people that was placed there. They had all the possessions and gold and such like that. People, it's all staying here. And it's all going to eventually burn. There's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. This this one right here was overflowed with water and it was destroyed. But this next time of judgment, it's going to be a judgment of fire. And it's going to be cleansed. And there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. New Jerusalem is coming down from heaven. I want to see that. Oh, man, do I want to see that. Eight. This is what, what I mentioned a minute ago talking about. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Oh me. <laughs> Can you say the same thing? And Thomas was like, oh, I want I want this. I want to have this. But, you know, man, I, I don't have the money. I can't get the money. And I'm mad about it. Sure, I've been like that. I think everybody out there has been like that. A lot of times, if you're wanting something, nine times out of ten, if you, if, if there's any way at all possible that you can make it happen, even if you've asked the Lord and the Lord said, no, this is not a good idea, I don't want you to do this, say, okay, well, that's fine, finally, thanks for your advice, I'm still going to do it. You get in trouble. I've seen it. It's happened to me, I, and I've seen it with others, too. So, when I'm talking to, me, talking to you guys, I'm talking to myself as well. It's in verse 8, having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Verse 10, and I'm going to try to close here in just one second with this. Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. <laughs> you know, you got that expensive big uh, uh, big fishing boat, yacht or whatever, something like that, and, you know, on uh, Sunday morning, you know, but you, you headed to the lake and you, you know, that's, you know, right, right then, that's, uh, well, at that point, you know, that boat and that time, that's that's turned into your God at one point. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. You foolish and hurtful us, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Err from the face, pierce himself through with many sorrows. Place God first. And, and, and whatever, day, whatever day that you set aside to worship the Lord, and honestly, we see that each and every day worships the Lord to a certain extent and make Him the Lord of our lives to guide and direct us. And don't let anything take His place. I mean, as I said, I'm preaching to myself too. I'm not putting myself up higher than 
anybody out there. I, I don't want to do that because I'm subject to like passions and like things just like everyone else while I'm in this flesh still. And I pray, as I hope you would pray, that I wouldn't err from the faith like that, that you wouldn't err from the faith like that, that your faith and worship and your love and, and adoration is for God. And the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you. And that is the core of this message, of all messages that's preached. Whether they be light messages, whether they be corrective messages, whatever the case may be, the very core of it is the saving, the salvation of your soul. And that's because the Lord Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross and died that we might have life everlasting. John 3.16 that's a verse I think everyone could quote, even people that's been out of church since they were a child. They can remember John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth him shall not perish, or should not perish, excuse me, but have everlasting life. And to flee away from these things that cause you to err, and that cause you to fall away from the Lord and make another God in your life. Whether that be money, whether that be uh, stuff. You know, you can collect stuff and do your, you know, and, and hobbies. People have hobbies. I have, I have hobbies. And it's okay to have things, you know. The Lord wants us to have a good life and have fun and enjoy it. But recognize him as he's the one that gives you those blessings. And sure, you can ask him for something if you know if he and if it's his will and you're able to do it and thing. He can bless you with with whatever. But don't let that blessing push him out of the way and put him at the back of the closet. And I always I last a little bit. Of that. That's something I I hammer against is people. When they start having trouble, they pull God out of the back of the closet and say, Okay, Lord, we need to fix this. We're having problems. And then when everything starts going good, you say, Okay. Push you right back in the closet and close the door. Say, Okay, well, we're doing good now. And, you know, I uh, heard a person say one time, See, the Lord will even bless you in your uh, disobedience or your rebellion. Huh? Did I hear that right? Yeah, that was what was said. Well, you know, that's there, there again. That's what people's grasping hold of stuff like that, and that's being preached. And you know what? That's very good and comfortable to the flesh and to the desires that you may have whatever they may be, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and you know, hey, just as long as I, you know, before I die, I repent and get right or something like that, or uh, I'm saved and, you know, the Lord knows it, and no matter what I do, uh, I'm still saved because, uh, you know, I know it says nothing shall separate us from the love of God, and it goes through an entire list, but you know what it doesn't list? doesn't say that you can't and I can back this up by several scriptures and this will be something else one other thing we get into that it says you can walk away from the faith that your name can be blotted out of the book of life another part says if you abide in law and go by the law and go out in that way you're falling from grace other, there's so many other things we can get into about that don't be one of them. Stay in the center of God's will. And you'll see good days. You'll have what the Lord wants you to have. You'll be content with what you have. You know, we've got a roof over our head and clothing and food and stuff like that. You know, there's some people that don't have that. But if they had that, they would be content and thankful. And right now, I'm sitting right here in uh, a room, a personal room, to come in, meditate, and do these videos and stuff like that. 
you know I've got a roof over my head and I've got food in here and the cabinets and you know thank the, thank the Lord for it we should thank the Lord every day for his blessings if we wake up you know give the Lord praise step outside you're in the day look up at the skies thank you Lord for this beautiful day and I do that man if we go out and there's a day and it's the, the sky is blue and sunshine and everything but it, it, it makes me feel good hey Lord thank you for this beautiful day but we should also be able to do it when we go out and it's gray and rainy. Hard to do. <laughs> I don't care much for the gray and rainy days, but if it's the day the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it, whatever it may be. Hallelujah. But that's about all the Lord had me to deliver at this time. As I said, there's uh, many, many things that's kind of popped up during this that I've got into just a little bit that uh, I really want to get into and uh, do kind of a, uh, I don't know if we call it a, you know, a teaching series or something like that um, about certain issues, uh, especially some of the things that we're facing as a church uh, in these last days. Uh, so stay tuned for all that and we'll continue to uh, do these videos and uh, hope that they're, they're uh, a help to someone uh, said, you know, you, you uh, sometimes can get discouraged about something, but you know, you got to keep it in mind. If uh, if you do a hundred videos, if uh, even one of those someone watches and it helps them and it turns their life around and they turn to the Lord and they get saved, then it's it is worth it. Amen. It is worth it because that would be one more soul added to the kingdom. And I don't want to be a soul winner. You should want to be a soul winner. To end more people for the kingdom. Because let me tell you what. The devil and his army is not sleeping. And his, and his, uh, his people are not uh, asleep. They're causing problems and taking people and get gaining people. And you know, taking people right to hell. So let's all be of one mind, be of one accord. Just like the, the people were in the upper room when at Pentecost when the Holy Ghost fell. Let's all come together. Let's get over these denominational differences that we have pull together in these last days because if not, it's gonna fall, everybody's gonna fall apart, fall to pieces. We gotta start building, <laughs> we gotta have the weapon in one hand and the building instrument or trial in one hand while we're building up the stronghold of the Lord and fighting off the enemy with the weapon in your other hand. That's what we got to do in these last days to help build God's kingdom more and more while we have the opportunity to do so. So we never know when that when the time is. Only the Father knows. The Lord's coming back. We will say this, people are going to be deceived because people are looking for a quick return of the Lord and this is another issue, but you know, people are going to be looking for the Lord and they're going to be deceived by the Antichrist thinking that he is he is the only true, one and true God. That's another issue to have there. Again, there's something else we, we can get into and uh, talk about and teach about. There's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Lord Jesus Christ died for us. Can you say this enough? Turn to him before it's everlasting too late. Because you never know when your number is going to be called. When the Lord decides, you know, your life is over, that's it. You can have the most, you can have all the money in the world and have the greatest and brightest doctors and uh, healers and uh, in the world. And uh, if it's God's will, you'll live. But if it's God's will that you're out of here, then you're out of here. It don't matter. That annoys some people. Oh, I'm in, con I'm in control of my own life. No, you're not. 
let's make it easy let's make it black and white if you're not serving God then you're making the devil a good servant it's kind of strong there but that you know hey sure there's only one of two ways you're going to enter in or you're going to have to depart at any rate you know God bless you all for tuning in. I hope something might have been said to have uh, that would have helped you. Maybe someone new that's actually stumbled across these videos. Uh, you know, seek the Lord with all your heart. Turn your heart over to Him. If He's drawing you to an altar of repentance, especially if you're home or something like that, that you know, that couch or that love seat or wherever, even on the hay. Know people to lay flat on their face on the ground, and we all really should technically do that because of the Lord and who He is, His, His Majesty of the Lord. But at any rate, kneel down on your knees and give your life, turn your life over to the Lord. It'll be the best decision that you will ever make above buying a car, buying a house, getting married, having a child. Your decision for Christ is going to determine your eternity yeah all the other stuff is going to end when you close your eyes in this life and death overtakes you but your decision for Christ is going to carry you through that and you will be with him for eternity and that should be our goal that should be our aim as I said thanks for tuning in Hope you enjoy this when you watch it or put it up on YouTube. Uh, you can leave comments, thumbs up, whatever you want to do. Uh, and, you know, be looking for more uh, messages. And as I said, you know, hopefully can get together some kind of a little teaching type series. We may do that several nights in a row. Uh, do some videos and put them up. And uh, we'll just see where the Lord wants to take us. Because uh, I want to be obedient to the Lord. At being an evangelist, and I said, you know, into the, uh, and called it to the spiritual warfare and watchman aspect of uh, what God would have me to do and what he would have others to do. There are other people that are watchmen and, you know, that are uh, fighting the good fight of faith. And God bless you all. Uh, I'll be right in there with you uh, as a brother in Christ. And uh, anyway, I gave you the service in our times. If you get a chance, come out and be with us. We'd love to have you. And hopefully the... Uh, you found the Lord and he saved yourself. He has walked in his perfect will for the remainder of your days. Uh, this is Tim and we're going to sign off for now and uh, we will see you in the next video. And I speak blessings in Christ upon each and every one of you out there. And we'll talk soon. Goodbye.